Last game of the week, Monday Night Football, New Orleans Saints versus Las Vegas Raiders. Um, Breeze is a start. Kamara is a start. Michael Thomas, I don't care what happened last week. He's a start. Jared Cook is a start. Sitting everybody else for New Orleans. Las Vegas, um, Carr is a sit. Look, Josh Jacobs, I'm starting him, but keep in mind, New Orleans is, uh, you know, New Orleans's run defense is very strong. The Raiders will stick with it, but this is going to be like a three yard per carry type day for Jacobs. It, it hinges on whether or not he can get in the end zone. I would say the bets are pretty good there. Um, I'm a start on Rugs. I'm a start on Waller. Sit everybody else for the Raiders. Take it away, David. For me, the one guy who stands out for the Saints and is a guy I had a lot of question marks about this year. It's Jared Cook. I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen with mm. this Emmanuel Sanders signing, and I was concerned, to be frankly honest. I liked the touchdown upside of Jared Cook, but he wasn't a guy I was sure I'd be able to count on on a weekly basis. He had five for eight. He was the leading receiver week one with Emmanuel Sanders also catching a touchdown. Drew Brees only threw for 160 yards. Cook had 80 of them. That's half of Brees' mm. yards. So. This was a bit of a litmus test for me for Jared Cook, and I think he passed it with flying colors. So I think Jared Cook is a guy who you're probably going to want to get into your lineup on a weekly basis just because of that touchdown upside. So I, I really like Jared Cook, especially the value that he provides. He was going pretty late in fantasy drafts this year. Yeah, you know, New Orleans, um, you, you saw what Tampa was trying to do. They were trying to limit Michael Thomas, and good for them they did that, but you see how strong this New Orleans team is. Not only offensively, but defensively as well. Um, you know, going to being able to go to Emmanuel Sanders and Jared Cook. Hey, you want to you know, double or triple cover and try to bracket Michael Thomas? Okay, well we'll just throw the ball to uh, to Kamara or to Cook or to whoever else. The bottomless um, pit of talent that they have. Uh, they're a tough team to beat, man. And the Raiders look. You know, Josh Jacobs getting three touchdowns. It's not a shocker. But what concerns me about this matchup for Vegas is that their strength, what what they want to do, their identity is an offense. They want to ground and pound, and they'll stay very patient. Even if, like, Jacobs is getting two yards per carry, they'll keep feeding him the ball, and I think that's important. But that's New Orleans' strength as a defense. I'm still a start on him, and I like what Ruggs showed in week one. I really do. Um, this Vegas team will get better as they get healthier, uh, but it's a tough matchup for them. What do you think about Vegas? I think you bring up a lot of good points about Josh Jacobs, especially because his three touchdown game, it wasn't just him going off. Like he went off, but he was doing it in the most friendly running back matchup that there is. Carolina allowed the most running back fantasy points to teams last year, and that's who he faced week one. So the three touchdowns, it was a bit predictable. Let's just start off with that. New Orleans, I mean, do you see him get getting even two touchdowns? I could see him getting one. Yeah. But the receiving usage, it's still not really there for Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Uh, the guy who I like for that team, it's Darren Waller. He was another one of those guys who stood out on the list that I looked at uh, posted by JJ. Mm -hmm. And he had, he was, I believe, t he was right behind Mike Williams. So he was top 10, 28.57% of the targets. So that's good for him. Um, I don't love the matchup against New Orleans, but I don't think you can start any wide receiver. Ruggs got banged up a, a little bit. He looked good. But again, we don't know what his injury status is. Brian Edwards didn't pop at all. Darren Waller is still the clear number one uh, receiver to me. And actually, I just noticed Jacobs caught four for 30, 46. So hey, how about that? I, I thought he caught less than that. I, I misread that. So I guess I'm a little bit more excited about Jacobs receiving usage than I thought. You know, it's it, one th one of the things I love, especially as, as a better, um, and I'll hit you with the line in a second, but Vegas, first of all, people are always down on the Raiders um, over the last, like, two or three years. Like, Gruden coaches teams, and I love teams. Tennessee is very much like this for me. I love teams that will say, we are going to run the ball. We are going to stick with it. If we're getting three yards per carry, it's not sexy, but we're going to stick with it because we know in the fourth quarter when we're trying to, you know, basically control clock in that game, um, if we're within a score and we have six minutes left, we're just going to run the ball tirelessly through you, eat up the clock, and, and get that last score to win the game. Vegas does that. Um, my concern, again, I, I'm repeating myself here, but New Orleans, ha their strength of their defense is that run defense. I think the line, New Orleans is minus 5.5. New Orleans minus 5.5 against the Raiders. Let me just throw it to you. Who do you think uh, is going to win in that spread? 
I take New Orleans. When I laid the line out, I put actually New Orleans minus six. Um, I'm going to take New Orleans to cover here. I think it'll be within an, a touchdown. I think it's good. It's just it's just tough because what Vegas wants to do as an offense is the the strength of what New Orleans does. So for me, they kind of negate each other. And then New Orleans' offense is just so damn good. I know Vegas the Ra- the Raiders' defense is getting better, but they still give up thirty points um, to a team that couldn't convert, <laughs> you know, in the red zone too often in Carolina. I think they're just uh, the Vegas right now is is outclassed by New Orleans. So I'll take New Orleans to cover that spread. So there you go, bud. That's about an hour and fifty minutes of fantasy football talk. We will be breaking this into segments uh, on YouTube. So check that out. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Ah, uh, man, that's a lot of fantasy football talk, David. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody. So we'll catch us next week. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to these Monday night games. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a lot of answers to questions. So, uh, you know, we're, we're fast and furious with this thing. Catch you next week. Have a great week. Win your fantasy football games, everyone.